The Suez War, 1956. Egypt refused to allow Israeli ships through the Suez Canal, and in 1951 also blocked the Strait of Tehran at Sharm el Sheikh, preventing Israeli ships from going south. In July 1952, a group of young officers in the Egyptian army overthrew the corrupt and inefficient King Farouk, and General Naguib became president. The real leader of the Free Officers Movement, however, was 34 year old Colonel Gamal Abdul Nasser. He took over as president in 1954. Nasser was determined to restore Egypt's pride of place in the Middle East and establish himself as the leader of the Arab world against the Western imperialist powers. Egyptians were discontented that the British troops had not left Egypt at the end of World War II and continued to control the Suez Canal, reducing Egypt to a colonial-like status. Part of Nasser's policy was to be seen as the champion of the Arabs against Israel. He encouraged Palestinian refugees in the Gaza Strip to attack Israeli civilians and destroy their property. He also armed these guerrilla fighters, who were called fedayeen, or self-sacrifices. Between 1950 and 1956, they killed more than 360 Israelis. After a number of attacks involving fedayeen based in Egypt, in February 1955, Israeli forces attacked a military, Egyptian military post in the Gaza Strip and killed eight soldiers. Nasser felt humiliated at the weakness of his defences and, in addition to arming and training more fedayeen, in August 1955, brought large quantities of Russian arms, including 200 tanks and 190 planes from Czechoslovakia. Fed by inflammatory rhetoric on both sides, tension grew to a breaking point. The breaking point between Israel and Egypt arrived when NASA unexpectedly nationalised the Suez Canal in July 1956. The British and French governments, the major shareholders in the Suez Canal Company, the company that operated the canal, were outraged. The British government owned a controlling share in the company and in 1955 one third of all ships using the canal were British. In addition, the Middle East supplied nearly 80% of Europe's oil and 45% of this reached Europe through the Suez Canal. The British were determined to regain the control, regain control of the canal. They were supported in this by the French government, who were concerned about the growing influence of Arab nationalism and the effect of Nasser's anti-colonialism on their colony of Algeria. When it became clear that the British were determined with French help to recapture the canal and if necessary overthrow Nasser, the Israelis secretly joined, agreed to join the war against the Egyptian president. The three countries hatched a plan of attack, meeting at Sevres, France, from the 22nd of October to the 24th of October 1956. They signed a secret agreement called the Severus Protocol, a summary of what each country had agreed to do. More than 100,000 Israeli soldiers were mobilised, and on the 29th of October 1956, Israeli troops supported by French aircraft attacked Egypt across the Sinai Desert. Israeli forces quickly advanced unopposed towards the Suez Canal, before halting as had been agreed with the England and France. The Egyptians ignored an Anglo-French ultimatum, ultimatum to withdraw since they were being asked to retreat from Sinai to the west bank of the canal, while the Israelis were just 16 kilometres east of the canal. England and France vetoed a United States-sponsored Security Council resolution on the 30th of October calling for an immediate Israeli withdrawal, and the two allies launched air operations, bombing Egyptian airfields near Suez. Given the pretext to continue fighting, Israeli armoured corps swept across the desert, routing the Egyptians and capturing virtually the entire Sinai by the 5th of November. That day, British and French paratroops landed near Port Said, and amphibious ships dropped commandos on shore. British troops captured Port Said and advanced to win 40, within 40 kilometres of Suez City. Faced with threats by the Soviet Union to use every kind of modern destructive weapon to stop violence, the British government abruptly, abruptly agreed to cease fire. The United States also threatened to withdraw tr support for a $1 billion loan to the British from the International Monetary Fund if the fighting continued. Although their allies had failed to recapture the canal or overthrow NASA, the Israelis were satisfied. By the end of the fighting, Israel held the Gaza Strip and had advanced as far as Sharm el Sheikh along the Red Sea. A total of 231 Israeli soldiers died in the fighting. United States President Dwight Eisenhower was angry that Israel, France, and the Great Britain had secretly planned a campaign to evict Egypt from the Suez Canal. He was especially upset with Israel for not informing the United States of its intentions 
and ignoring American entreaties not to go to war. He threatened to discontinue all American assistance, impose United Nations sanctions and expel Israel from the United Nations if Israel did not withdraw from the Sinai. Ironically, the United States was joined in these moves by the Soviet Union, who had just invaded Hungary. Israel did withdraw without obtaining any concessions from the Egyptians, although the war temporarily ended the activities of the Fedayeen. However, within a few years, the Fedayeen were reinforced by a loosely knit group of terrorist organisations that became known as the Palestinian Liberation Organisation. The Sinai was to be the scene of the next war. Before withdrawing, Israel received an assurance from Eisenhower that the United States would maintain the freedom of navigation in the Gulf of Aqaba. In addition, Washington sponsored a United Nations resolution creating the United Nations Emergency Force to supervise the territories vacated by the Israeli forces.